Hello, my name is David Getoff. I'm a board-certified clinical nutritionist, a board-certified traditional naturopath, and a fellow of the American Association of Integrative Medicine. I'm an elected member of both the American College of Nutrition and the International College of Integrative Medicine, and I am a member of the New York Academy of Sciences. I hold quite a few other credentials and positions, but I don't want to be too verbose with that on this video. It was recently brought to my attention that there is very little accurate information on the web regarding what an individual could do to in any way help protect themselves from the damaging effects of ionizing radiation, which is still coming in from the Fukushima disaster. I recently watched a television news special on this ongoing problem in Japan, and I was rather amazed at how bad things are over there and how little we hear about it, any of it over here in the United States. Whatever filters are being used to reduce our knowledge of this should be stopped. And we should certainly be made more aware of this ongoing tragedy, both of what's happening to our friends in Japan and possibly any current and future U.S. health repercussions, which I'm not convinced of at the moment, even though a lot of people are promoting all sorts of very, very worrisome information. I am not convinced. <clears throat> so let's begin with some facts. First of all, you cannot stop ionizing radiation from entering or actually passing through your body by taking a nutritional supplement of any kind. The word protection is being applied very often and it's really being applied incorrectly as it applies to radiation. It's often being misused in this regard. If you were to think of radiation as a huge number of microscopic bullets passing through your tissues, you'll get a better idea of what I mean. Protection from the radiation would have to be lead or concrete walls between you and where the radiation is coming from. I guess if you're a billionaire and a hermit, uh, you could build your own castle with all sorts of protections and self-sufficiencies, uh, but this is not what this video is about. If we eat something which is radioactive, then all these bullets are actually generated from inside our body and are shooting outside until that substance has been completely eliminated. And we eliminate substances in our urine, in our stool, in our sweat, etc. By the way, this is done in hospitals all over the world when patients are fed or injected with radioactive liquids which are used to help us, help us, not me, I don't do that, but to help the medical profession, with special scanning equipment for diagnostic purposes such as a positron emission tomograph or PET scan where they inject radioactive sugar into the body and the cancer who loves sugar grabs it up and you can see where the tumors are. A radioactive iodine is injected into the body because the thyroid gland in most people is so deficient in iodine because their diet has been deficient. When you give them radioactive iodine, thyroid tissue grabs up the radioactive iodine and the radioactivity kills the thyroid gland. So this issue of protection from radiation itself by moving into a lead or concrete self-contained bomb shelter either underground or in the middle of nowhere, that's not what we're talking about. Instead, we need to understand what and how the radiation damages both in our bodies and our body tissues and what if anything we can do to either reduce or minimize this harm and or to speed the body's abilities to repair the tissues and organs which get damaged if they do or harmed uh, by the radiation. Ionizing radiation harms tissues by oxidizing it and therefore antioxidant nutrients seems to be one of our best or seem to be uh, among our best lines of defense. There are lots of different antioxidant nutrients and they have different protective jobs and so you cannot simply take a huge dose of one. In other words, you don't want to just take a massive dose of vitamin C because doing that would be as silly as taking a workman who's building a house for you and telling him or her that we're going to give you as many screwdrivers as you want but it's the only tool you're allowed to have. Well, that doesn't work. It doesn't matter how many screwdrivers you give them. They can't use a screwdriver in place of an electric drill, of a wrench, uh, of a ball-peen hammer, and so having more screwdrivers doesn't get the job done. In the same way, antioxidants are used in our body by different tissues, and you can't simply say, well, we're going to pick one of them, like vitamin C, because maybe it's cheap or you have a lot, and we're just going to use lots of vitamin C. It won't get to all the different places and give the same protections that certain tissues need from other antioxidant vitamins. So, the second problem is that certain glands and tissues, such as the thyroid, prostate, uh, breast tissue, seem to be possibly more sensitive 
to some forms of radiation if they have too little of a specific nutrient, with that nutrient, or at least one of those nutrients, being iodine. When radioactive iodine gets into areas which have numerous iodine receptors, and that would include prostate tissue, breast tissue, and thyroid tissue, and there are all these iodine receptors, if there aren't enough molecules or atoms of iodine on these receptors, filling them up so they don't need any more, then they will grab onto the radioactive iodine and begin ionizing or oxidizing, or let's just say harming these tissues. If the receptors have had adequate dietary exposure to iodine, and in some cases iodide, which is a different form, then the receptors are already filled and they do not grab onto the radioactive version because they don't need it, they already have enough. Radioactive cesium-137 and radioactive iodine-131 have both been reported and tested from the Fukushima disaster. But the half-life of the iodine is very short. I've read that it is, uh, from what I've taken a look at on the web, is that it's eight days. And so it is much less likely to be here in the U.S. because after many more days than eight, it has gone down in, uh, in strength dramatically before it gets here. And since cesium-137 may be the main issue, I'm not totally sure. I can't believe everything I hear. I have no idea just how much benefit our tissues might derive from iodine and iodide supplements, such as Modifylon seaweed extract, one of the good ones, or other kelp or iodine products on the market. Because cesium is a totally different substance. We don't have cesium receptors. We do have iodine receptors. And so I'm not sure how much more iodine in our diet will help us from these others, but it's not going to hurt if the level is, too, too, is not too large, so it would still be worthwhile. What would I do for the benefits of my body and the bodies of my wife and my cats? And I phrase my question in this way due to the Federal Drug Administration, or Food and Drug Administration, I'm sorry, FDA. And that's so they cannot in any way come back at me and say that I am prescribing supplements to the public with this video, because that is not what I'm doing. The FDA simply wants drugs to be prescribed for the pharmaceutical companies, and thousands, if not tens of thousands of people die each year as a direct result of taking prescription and non-prescription drugs. If you want to read about that, the best article is called Death by Medicine, and it's in the published article section of my website. I did not write it. It was written by multiple MDs and PhDs. There have been so few deaths ever recorded from any kind of non-adulterated nutritional supplements that I believe, if you look at the statistics, you are more likely to die from a shark attack, probably even if you don't swim, uh, or being hit by lightning. First of all, every day I take many supplements, on a daily basis, having nothing to do with the radiation, to keep me feeling young and energetic, so that 40 years from now, when I'm 100, I will still have my energy and my memory. Part of these daily supplements include many antioxidants, which will help reduce oxidation damage, from radiation in various tissues and therefore serve to do a lot of what this, again, I don't like the word protection, uh, could be added you know, to my health. And what I'm saying basically is without adding extra, because I take quite a few supplements, I'm already getting a lot of this. Again, I don't like the word protection. But there is no better word. It, does, it protects us in some ways. <clears throat> I take about 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C two or three times a day, sometimes more. I take two capsules of a product called Unique E, I believe it's the best E on the market, with my breakfast. I take anywhere from 10 to 25,000 international units of a real, true, animal-based vitamin A from either Now Foods or Carlson Laboratories. Um, I take three to four capsules of either Modifylon brand seaweed extract or NOW uh, kelp extract, uh, excuse me, kelp capsules, uh, to get in some extra iodine. I take a tablespoon of cod liver oil, lemon-flavored, from Carlson to keep my omega-3 fats adequate so that any which become damaged as a result of just normal metabolism or oxidative ionizing radiation will be able to get replaced with new molecules daily from the good quality products that I take. And I take a good high potency multivitamin multimineral with breakfast and dinner such as Super Nutrition's Perfect Family Iron Free as I personally have adequate iron and don't need any more. I also take enough vitamin D in the form of liquid-filled vitamin D3, that's the natural form, gel caps, not dry vitamin D tablets and not capsules filled with a dry powder, to make certain that my tested level of 25-hydroxy vitamin D3 remains between 60 and 80 nanograms per milliliter, which is a U.S. lab test standard, 
if you're in Canada or some of the other metric countries, you can't use that because they don't use nanograms per milliliter. So in Canada, for example, a conversion would be 150 to 200 nanomoles per liter. Because of all these supplements that I take daily, just because I want to live to be 100 and be healthy, I love being 60 and being healthy, I am already taking enough antioxidants and daily iodine in my modifylon or kelp capsules to get what my tissues need in case of minor exposures to radiation. And, and we have minor exposures all the time. We get ionizing radiation just from the atmosphere. Um, uh, there's research showing that if you are a, a flight attendant or an airline pilot, so you are uh, traveling a lot, you know, tens of thousands of feet above the atmosphere, so some of the filtration is removed, you get even more ionizing radiation, so those people should always be getting Oh, a bunch of antioxidants, some kelp and iodine, etc. However, if I became more worried and heard legitimate proof rather than speculation, or if my own inspector alert nuclear radiation meter showed me that local levels of radiation had actually and truly gone up to the point that I needed to change anything, I would probably do the following. I would raise my vitamin C, which I get from mixed ascorbates, to uh, 2,000 milligrams three or four times a day. I would raise my unique E to three or four capsules with breakfast, and that's based on my body weight. I weigh 165 pounds. Uh, I would take uh, 25,000 units of vitamin A on most days, but maybe a couple days a week I'd make that 50,000 units of vitamin A, and that's the real vitamin A, not beta carotene. Uh, I would raise my modifylon, uh, which is a specific brand of, of a good kelp extract, uh, to six capsules per day, or if I was taking the NOW kelp capsules, to six capsules a day. And I would probably add a Redizor, which is a brand name, of liquid refrigerated glutathione, um, uh, let's say a quarter of a teaspoon twice a day. Glutathione is one of the strongest antioxidants on the planet, and my body might possibly not be making enough under those conditions, so I'd take a little bit more. The problem is that you can't store uh, Redizor's glutathione, which I believe is one of the best, uh, in uh, long-term storage, because even in the refrigerator, you should probably throw it out after a year and buy more, because anything that's that active doesn't last for a long, long time. It needs to be replaced. I would also start taking some alpha-lipoic acid, which although I've taken in the past, I don't take it now. And so I might take a real good alpha-lipoic acid. That could be uh, Jaro makes one uh, called alpha-lipoic sustain 300. I might take one of those with breakfast and dinner. Uh, Geronova Research makes uh, something called k Rala 10 which is a horrible tasting liquid that I believe is one of the best alpha-lipoic acids on the market. I might take 20 drops of that a couple times a day. And I would also start taking some liver and kidney support, um, similar to the way I outlined it in my detoxification DVDs, to make sure that those organs continue to eliminate whatever toxic substances might develop in my body due to the extra radioactivity, because it kills things, damages things, and the body has to get rid of them. Now, my wife and my cats would get similar doses, but reduced for their body weights, and my cats would not get any alpha-lipoic acid, which can be toxic to cats, and I would check on all the other nutrients to make sure that none of those were a problem before I gave them to cats, because I don't want to hurt the cats. The doses I gave you are the ones I would take, and I am 5 foot 10, uh, 60 years old, and 165 pounds. I already own a porcelain filter made by Dalton. It's under my sink, and that would give me the ability, as it does now, to not only filter things very well, but to remove any types of tiny particles that might possibly have any kind of radioactivity so they would be trapped in the filter and not be able to get into my water. And certainly you have to drink plenty of good quality water, preferably pH of 7 to a pH of 8 uh, from deep springs so that you get enough water so that the body can flush out things it needs to flush out. What people don't quite understand is that your body's overall health is just as important, or maybe more important, as your ability, or rather for your ability, uh, to renew tissues and repair radiation damage, as your antioxidant level. So if your immune system is currently being compromised every day by your own consumption of processed corn syrup and agave nectar, boxed breakfast cereals, large amounts of grains, especially wheat, which I consider to be toxic because of how much it's been hybridized and genetically modified, and all sorts of laboratory manufactured sweeteners like aspartame, which is also called equal and amino sweet, uh, sucralose, known as Splenda, neotame, which may be worse than all of them, um, then you're going about things, let's say, to be nice and not use bad words, bass ackwards. 
because what you should be doing is straightening out your diet first to make your body generally healthier and able to do the things it needs to do and then bring in all of these special supplements. If roaches and mice take over your home, the first thing you should do is not to call an exterminator to bring in all sorts of poisons to try to kill them, but instead clean up your house. Stop using the things that make it hospitable to those creatures. Stop leaving all the trash in the sink overnight. Stop leaving crumbs on the floor that attract the roaches. Well, your house in this respect is your body. And clean up your body and learn what that means because everybody has all sorts of different ideas of what it means to clean up your body. You might go to my website, davidgetoff.com, and uh, try my 30-day uh, my uh, health diet. There's nothing for sale on my website. It's all free information. The MP3s are free. The published articles are free. The videos are free. I'm just trying to give information. You might go to uh, Price Pottinger, uh, PP for Price Pottinger, NF for NutritionFoundation.org, and pick up a copy of the new movie, In Search of the Perfect Human Diet, from this 60-year-old foundation, Price Pottinger, and see what we, were, what we were really meant to eat, as opposed to what you think humans were really meant to eat. So let this worry about nutrition be more important that I'm trying to instill in you than the worry about radiation that got you to watch this DVD, or excuse me, this video. And let that be your call to arms to start getting your entire body healthy and ready for whatever comes next, and not just this current radiation challenge or worry. I would wish you good luck, but after 20 years of helping my patients and students get well, it is extremely clear to me that luck has very little to do with it. Education first, and putting the education or knowledge to use is second. My website, which as I said has nothing for sale and all the information is free, is actually naturopathforyou.com, but just put in davidgetoff.com and it will redirect you. Hopefully everybody watching this can spell David as well as the two words get and off linked together, .com. And I will end this video with two of many favorite quotes I have, and many of them are on my website, but these two are very pertinent. The first is by Mark Twain, and the quote is, what gets us in trouble is not what we don't know. It's what we know for sure that just ain't so. That is one of the most appropriate pieces of information that I like to use to open the eyes of all of the medical doctors and other health professionals that take my courses, attend my lectures, uh, go to the various different foundations that I teach at, uh, or watch my DVDs. You have to understand how much of what you're certain of is wrong and open your mind to see what things you might learn that will help you change your life. And the second is a little older. It's from Epictetus. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He's been dead for a long time. A Greek-born Roman philosopher. And his quote is, It is impossible for anyone to begin to learn what he thinks he already knows. I wish you long, healthy life, and I hope that in some way I have helped to increase its length, increase its health, and maybe helped your entire family improve theirs. Thank you for listening.